Today, I, I'm going to go over all the feeders that I've got that I know of that are good to keep bees out. And the ones that say they keep bees out don't really keep bees out. And when you know this, you'll be able to keep the bees away from your feeders like I do. I think a bee just flew in the house. Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California. And today, we're going to talk bees. We'll get into a whole lot as we go on on which ones are good, which ones are bad, which ones may not be that good for certain reasons, and which ones that, well, let's get into this right away. A lot of these hummingbird feeders will not work for bees. This one is one of my favorite ones. But when it comes to bees, let me tell you something, they can almost get their head in those holes. Those holes are big enough then they can get their head in. So this doesn't work for bees. So when they're swarming, they're swarming and they will find this feeder. This is my favorite feeder. I really do like this one. It's by First Nature, but that is the only issue. Now keep in mind, bees don't swarm all the time. They're generally looking for food when there's no flowers and when the weather is bad. So they find this food and this is important to them. As far as contaminating the food, the bees don't contaminate the food. Ants contaminate the sugar water, but bees don't. But hummingbirds don't like generally feeding around bees. You wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to either. So I use these all year, but when the bees start to swarm, I swap them out. And I swap them out for this one. This one is a Walmart exclusive hummingbird feeder. They actually designed it. I've called and talked to the company. A couple years ago, their slits looked super thin to me, a little too thin, and I called and talked to the company and they said, well, that's the way Walmart designed them. But I think the slits are a little bit bigger now than they were. And if you want them bigger, you can take a soldering iron and make the slits a little bit bigger. But what I do is I train the hummingbirds. Yes, I train. I train the hummingbirds to drink out of these as well. There's two sizes. I'll get into that in a second. The way I train them is I have multiple feeders out. But I always try to keep one of these out. So they test it. If they don't like it, they'll move to another feeder. But in the meantime, they know how to use it. Because when the other ones are full, they come in really heavy in the morning and really heavy at night. That's when they're all busy, the feeders, and the hummingbirds that don't like this feeder, well, they'll go to this feeder if there is no seats on the other feeders. And they'll feed from this reluctantly, but they learn how to use it. And that's what I want them to do because when the bees are swarming, I cannot use this feeder or anything that's got too large of a hole. So I've got them here trained to use that. Now this one is just a simple feeder. You know, this feeder is less than $4 and you can buy them online from Walmart. If you've got groceries, like I get my groceries from Walmart and I'm not affiliated or anything with with Walmart. I just use them because I get my groceries. I pay like $107 for a year and then I get all my groceries delivered for free. Plus I give a tip. But you also get other benefits from them such as going on their website and buying a feeder. They will deliver one feeder for free. So you don't have to pay for shipping. So this is why I've been buying a lot of them from them and then I can have them washed, clean, they're ready to go and I have two sets. So I have the ones with the small ones. So this is a simple one, it's under $4. This is their larger model and if you're only feeding a few, you don't need the larger model, but it's got an amp mode. So you fill this with water. Some people are telling me now they're using cinnamon, you can use olive oil, whatever works for you. Don't put anything toxic in there because the birds sometimes test it. But you can fill this with olive oil or cinnamon or whatever works. And then you can hang this out and the ants can't get to it. And the bees cannot get to it. And this, let me tell you something, is a really sturdy plastic. The reason I love these is, look at this. Cleaning, this is the easiest thing to clean. This is magnificent to use. And it's a really heavy plastic. Speaking of heavy plastics, let me show you this one for a minute. This one I used to use, but I can't use it anymore. It's got a seam and it's a thinner plastic, really thin. I've actually had bees gnaw through thin plastic. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a hummingbird feeder. If the plastic is really thin, sometimes they can make a little bit of a hole and that can be a problem. They won't make it in the reservoir because of course if they do that, psh, they'll be swimming all over or in the air on that. But they will make it in any seams and this has got a seam around here, so that's what you don't want. Now the other thing is, if your hummingbird feeder swings, that is a big thing. 
then you're splashing possibly sugar water around, or the feeder is, and that's how they come and they test it, and it's like, oh, wow, they got the mother load in here. Look at this flower's full, and they get all excited, and they'll hang around, so maybe the wind will blow it around. But remember, they can't get in this, so this one works perfect. Now, as far as flowers, the simple one from the dollar store actually has lift. Here's one from the dollar store. Though the nectar won't be around here, there's still lift. He still has to get past this. See, this one's got lift there. That little bit makes a big difference where he won't be able to reach the nectar. It's lifted there and it's lifted there. This particular one, the hole is in there. He can get all the way down. That's a big hole and he can get straight down to the nectar because the hole is on the very bottom. And the ones from Walmart, even though they have slits, there still is a lift here and the nectar is going to be down here. So this has got a good lift. Look them over. There's lift here. A bee cannot reach, well they say a quarter of an inch, let's give them a half an inch, but they can't even reach a quarter to a half inch. Remember the hummingbird can reach an inch to an inch and a half. So you want to make sure there's good lift that a bee can't get in there. And even though these are they seem to be a little bit light and plastic. I've never had one of these gnawed. I have had the bees go, check it out, and they cannot get in these. So these work really good. Same thing with these. This is an old retired one. There's enough lift on that flower that they haven't been able to get in there. So you want to make sure there's a lift. If it's flat and it's got a small hole with, it, with a bee guard, but the hole is still big enough for them and it's too close to the nectar, they're going to get in there. Remember, they can go about a quarter of an inch or so. So if they can reach it, they're going to sit there and push themselves down and try to get in there. If they can't reach it, they're not going to waste their time. Any of your flowers fall off, look, I put some duct tape on there years ago and the duct tape is still on there. So you can always duct tape the ones that you lost the flowers. And when buying flowers, in case some of you have had flowers and they fell off, you can't find them, be sure you're buying flowers that will fit yours because a lot of times they sell the flowers, but it's not going to fit your hummingbird feeder. I'm going to look at these really quick to show you. See the lift on that? It's still very, very close. Though it's got a big lift and it looks really good, notice it's dusty. I have never even set this one up. It looks like it's got a lot of lift, but the hole is deep, deep inside, which means they can put their head in there and they can possibly, if the nectar goes up to their side here, all the way up, they'll be able to reach it. This one, the reason I haven't used it yet, and it's unfortunate when they make these, do not come apart. This is it. I have no way of cleaning inside. After a few uses, there'll be mold in there, and there, it's impossible. You'd have to soak this in bleach and shake it up and hope for the best. And Well, it's nice for a decoration, and then once it's done, it's done. Same thing with this one. The base doesn't come apart, and that to me is very, very important. See how small it is to clean compared to these that have big wide mouth? See that? Think about that when you're buying a hummingbird feeder, but I don't want to get into that. We're only talking bees. So just keep that in mind. And then this one, if the, if the nectar is on the bottom rim on this and they can't reach it, that's the main thing. So think of reach, think of spillage, and you can always make your own. I've made these. And these are like dots. You can get these in a package. I bought the, the whole package for a dollar. And then I make my own hummingbird feeders. I have them hanging out there. They have square ones and round ones. If you don't fill it to the very top and you sit these around or make holders for them, the bees can't get in there. Remember that. The hummingbirds can reach all the way to the bottom of these. They literally empty these. So don't get anything too deep because they only have so much of a beak that can get in there. And they're tongue but the bees can't. So that's what you want to think about. The other thing you can do, and it's going to sound terrible, but if you see a dead bee around, you're in your garden, you see a dead bee, pick up the bee gently, be careful if they got a stinger, use something, a spoon, and sit it on the feeder. I have actually done that, and I have actually sat a bee on the feeder, a dead one I found in the garden, something happened, it drowned or something, and I have seen the bees, now this doesn't work all the time, but it kind of does sometimes, I've seen the bees come see a dead bee on there and they go, whoa, we don't want to come here and they leave. Now they're not all going to do that because if that bee belongs to another colony, they couldn't care less. But if it belongs to their colony and they sense that, they may go on 
their merry way. You can put out bowls of sugar water for the bees if the bees are going crazy and looking for food. So you can put out a small shallow bowl, put some rocks in there because remember they'll drown and they'll climb on the rocks and use it. Gary has taken a hummingbird feeder and he has put it next to his beehive because I found out that one of these ones that were coming in here and swarming were going back to his beehive. So he simply took one of them with the larger holes and he hung it there and they stopped bothering my feeders and they just went back and they had their very own feeder to use. So there's different ways you can deter the bees. So keep that in mind. Make sure it's not spilling. Make sure your holes are small enough that the bees can't go and get their head in there and make sure that there's enough lift away from the nectar, away from the nectar so they can't reach it because they are looking and hunting for food. It's really important for them to get out there, get their food and get back to their hive. And they don't wanna waste their time because, well, they just don't wanna waste their time. So as long as they cannot reach the nectar in there. So if the nectar went all the way to the top, then that's not good. But you have to look, you can kind of see where it goes down. This has got a dip, so it's only gonna to go to that far. And as long as they cannot reach it, they won't bother with it. Try to keep it in a place that it's not swaying a lot. If you've got a lot of wind, well then you may want to make a pedestal and sit it out there on a pedestal until the bees stop swarming. You don't usually have a lot of bees in the winter. We have hummingbirds all year round, hundreds and thousands and thousands in the winter. And if you have them in the winter where you are, you can always sit this and then it won't sway and that will help prevent bees too. But in the winter, I don't have as many bees anyways. They tend to come out when they can't find enough flowers. Like today we're kind of sunny and then it gets cloudy. And if the flowers are closed or they can't find enough flowers, then they'll bother. But as you can see, I only have tons of hummingbirds out there that are waiting for me to finish and there's no bees right now. So I hope I've answered your question on bees. You can't really put anything on here or smear anything weird around to deter the bees. It doesn't work that way because when they find the sugar water, they come. So just get ones with bee guards. And usually these are really good. Like I said, the dollar ones are good. This simple one, they still make these and they look much nicer when they're new. They work really good. These are okay as long as it's not too deep. But this one, the only problem is you can't clean it. I'm going to tell you... This is the best $3.67, let's say $4 that you will ever spend to keep bees away. Bees cannot get into this Walmart feeder. And make sure if you're getting it for bees that it's got the small slits. You will have to order it online if Walmart doesn't have it in the store. A lot of times in the fall and the winter they don't have it. They tend to get them in in the spring. And then a lot of times they don't have it through the holiday season until spring again. So you can order them online. They will show, I don't know why their website will show the larger holes, but if you're buying it exclusively from Walmart and you're spending under $4 for it, then it is their feeder and you will get the small slits and you will be happy, happy, happy with this feeder. I hope I've answered your questions. Ask questions, share your knowledge as well of what works for you because we all need it. And well, my hands are dusty because look, I don't use these feeders. And it's really important that we all kind of help each other out. And I hope I've given you ideas. Please like and subscribe. I've been told by YouTube to say that. Please like and subscribe. And we'll do more on this. And I will go through the questions. And if there's good questions in there, and I think I may have an answer, I'll come back and do another one like this. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, am I in your way? I probably am. This is, you know, for a dollar, this is really the nicest feeder. And for three dollars and like 70 cents, this is really the nicest. Two dollars more, you get an ant moat and double size, but it's way too big if you've only got a couple hummingbirds. Way too big. And then, of course, you can always make your own. And these have been wonderful. The hummingbirds absolutely love the dots they make. And you can make all kinds of fancy holders for it. All right, I think I've talked about everything.